What is up, everybody? How's it going? Sorry, as I last minute adjust the camera there. Welcome into the Sacktown Sports Kings recap. Coming to you after a Kings win, 121 uh, to 82 over the Portland Trail Blazers. Uh, just to get tonight's game, or today's game, as the sun's still out, uh, today's game out the way. Kings pretty much had this one wrapped up by halftime, as they very much should. I think they were up 25 or 30. Uh, it was just about 30 points, 37-65 uh, at halftime. Uh, Blazers just honestly couldn't make a shot. They had two made threes through, uh, through halftime. First quarter, they were one of 19. Uh, one of 19 from three. So remember that game against OKC the other day when we were complaining about all those threes that the Kings took. Uh, at least they made more than one. One of 19 at the end of the first, two of 27 at the end of the uh, half, four of 34 uh, at the end of three quarters, and then they made seven of 45 at the end of the game. That's honestly the reason why the Blazers never even made this remotely competitive. Great. Um, Deer and Fox played great tonight. Uh, you know, he, he, in the moments when he was in, was incredibly aggressive, had a, some defensive moments where he was uh, just locking down uh, anybody they put in front of him, got a couple steals. Uh, but as I talk right now, the Los Angeles Lakers have just beaten the New Orleans Pelicans. We officially have beef with the, with the Pelicans uh, after they have beaten the Kings five times this year and now couldn't even help out themselves as if the Pelicans would have beaten the Lakers today, the Pelicans would have had the sixth seed, uh, the Kings would have had the, the eighth seed. Uh, however, with the Lakers officially now beating the New Orleans Pelicans, it is now 100% official. The Sacramento Kings finish the regular season as the nine seed and will play the number 10 Golden State Warriors on Tuesday. Uh, I'm hearing at 5 or 5.30 right here at Golden One Center. Uh, and time is a flat circle, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why we even played this whole season if we all knew that at the end of the day, for some reason, these guys are always in uh, the Kings way and and that is happening yet again uh, as the Kings will play the Golden State Warriors in the 9-10 matchup of the NBA play-in tournament uh, they will then if they win play the loser of Los Angeles versus New Orleans who will now have a rematch on Tuesday as well that will be following the Kings Warriors game uh, but it is uh, it is now official yeah the Kings fell from, I mean, I think they were as high as the sixth seed uh, post All Star break, and and slide all the way down to the nine seed. Of course, the injury to Malik Monk is is obviously the reason why, but you know that's they also put themselves in this situation throughout this season with losses. I, I tweeted it out today because I know there's people who, uh, you know, who who are just sad honestly and look at i mean i'm not saying i don't want to say you're not sad in a in a bad way but uh i am also like this I'm, i would say just a scarred kings fan maybe maybe not sad a scarred kings fan uh would look at today's game the fact the kings were 16 point favorites i looked it up the kings have lost three times this season when being a double digit favorite according to vegas odds uh, and that was against Detroit, that was against Charlotte, and it was also against Washington. Uh, two of those games were at home. So, you know, I know everybody had uh, some sort of fear that the Kings might lose today. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's games like those throughout this season that have put the Kings in this kind of situation. Uh, and ultimately, I think they have themselves to blame. Of course, you can you can definitely uh, throw the Malik Monk and Kevin Herter injuries out there as as things that kind of was the the hammer on the nail. But you know, ultimately, I think they just blew way too many games this year. Um, you know, besides the ones I even mentioned, those are like the big ones against the worst teams in the league. But you know, I think of that Miami game when Jimmy Butler didn't play here and, and Jaime Jaquez went crazy. I think of. Uh, I think they lost to Chicago in that same uh, time uh, when, when uh, obviously, Zach Levine wasn't playing. I don't know. I'm not sure if DeMar DeRozan was playing, but I remember Chicago was down that game, and uh, they still managed to win. <coughs> so, 
so it's games like that. Losing those kind of games throughout the regular season is why the Kings are in the position that they are now. Of course, the injuries are are, uh, are an additive factor to that, but ultimately, uh, this team has been inconsistent all year long for the stretch of this 82-game season, and I, that is that has put themselves, even though the Kings for back-to-back seasons for the first time, I think since uh, the glory years, the 2001-2002, so I guess the last time they would have done this is 2000. 2003 or possibly 2003 2004 but the kings finished 10 games above 500 uh, which is not something that the kings have been able to say for a very very long time so even though they finish a great regular season record especially by king standards it just wasn't good enough this year in the west and um you know ultimately you can say what did you expect kings bring back the same personnel that they brought last year and win 46 games uh where last year they win 48 games i think that's very very fair to say but uh, and you can definitely argue that you know if malik monk plays it's probable that the kings probably finish with 48 wins which is exactly what they finished with last year um, so what do you really expect? I, I definitely get that side of it, and I don't think that there's uh, a good retort to it. But I think that still there was even more opportunity for this team to again exceed expectations. But inconsistent play from Kevin Herter. Uh, not a lot of touches for Harrison Barnes. Keegan Murray taking a big step on the defensive side, but ultimately on the offensive side, adding to the inefficiency. And the Kings ultimately just not getting anything productive out of their offseason moves. Um, I think all of that led to, uh, like, all of those things uh, combining into one season, uh, which, you know, usually a couple of those things will happen and you got to try and fight through that adversity. But when really nothing worked for you that you were banking on uh, to improve this season, I think that's ultimately why the Kings didn't exceed expectations. You could argue they fell short of expectations, but at the very least fall in the same category as they were last year, um, which is also okay. Mike Brown has talked a lot, especially post-All-Star game, about how this is year two in a long process teams like denver and even golden state with their mark jones years uh mark jackson years excuse me uh you know they they had to go through multiple years of of struggling through lower rounds of the playoffs being a uh below a five seed uh this is still only year two of the process i think there's no way especially now that the kings uh are in this play-in situation I definitely think that there's going to be big moves that happen this offseason. Um, it's only, I shouldn't say only, I, I, it, it's seemingly only going to go uh, up from here. So th- that, that's a bit of a positive spin on a pretty uh, bad situation right now because that ultimately will bring us into, uh, yes, this matchup that the Kings have coming up, Golden State, uh, a familiar foe that obviously we, we all know. Uh, don't really have to do much research because we've seen this team, of course, seven games last year, but also it felt like 10 times in the preseason. Uh, we had to play them, I think, three times in the first 10 games uh, of the regular season. We have seen this team so much. I know it's honestly been a while. I know the Kings played them kind of recently um, after a long break off, but <clears throat> they have Chris Paul back. Uh, they have Brandon Pajemski and, and Trace Jackson Davis fully integrated into their uh, into their rotation. Draymond's back. Clay Thompson's coming off the bench and playing incredibly well. Andrew Wiggins is is played okay. They have Jonathan Kaminga though he hasn't played uh, in, in some time. I'm pretty sure he's going to be available uh, for the playoffs. You know the the Warriors are a really good team and the Kings are are you know they're really trending in completely different directions. I don't know if the Warriors ended up winning today. Uh, against against the uh, they played the Utah Jazz, but the Warriors won eight of their last ten uh, heading into tonight's or today's game. I keep saying tonight, uh, heading into today's game. Uh, so you know they they're playing really well, and the Kings are arguably playing uh, some of their their worst basketball. Um, and you know I I don't know if they know what their identity is heading into this game. The Warriors know who they are. They're coming in confident after doing what they did to this team last year in the postseason. They feel like this is a business trip. They're like this is just a roadblock on the way. We know how to take care of this team, uh, and and it's honestly on to the next one in terms of their thought process. I'm sure of it. But uh, the Kings have to try and do the thing that they couldn't do. You can view this as an ultimate. Uh, path to redemption if you want the Kings 
uh, can really make up for that game seven. I don't think anybody expected them to win that game six in Golden State, and they completely shocked everybody, I think Warriors included. Uh, there's that infamous meeting that Steph Curry had before game seven, <clears throat> essentially saying like, no, this is not how we go down. We're better than this. And, and they kind of had to have a moment in order to pull themselves out. And even then, Steph had 50 in that game seven. Uh, this is a, an opportunity to right that wrong if you're Mike Brown and his staff. Uh, you know, you, you have to believe that, you know, I, it, I wouldn't put it past him, but Steph probably isn't going to get to 50 again. I don't, please don't clip that and replay it if it happens, because uh, it definitely might. It definitely might happen. Uh, they might need it, but ultimately, uh, you, you have to figure out how to fix what went wrong in that game seven. And uh, in a weird way, it's, it's a real test to, uh, to Mike Brown. Like the fact that you, again, pretty much get to uh, not many times, especially in sports, do you get an opportunity to truly uh, go back and, and, and get revenge or, or to, again, right or wrong. But this is a very, very, very rare opportunity that they have. And I think they will have the element of surprise because I, I know Golden State's going to say the cliches of, you know, we they're an NBA team, they're in this situation, we're in this situation, so we can't go in here thinking we're better than anybody. But ultimately, they they know they know Draymond's going to exude that confidence. He's going to talk that talk, uh, and and they're probably uh, going to be hyped honestly they're hyped that they're playing the kings they could not be happier they feel like uh they they own us but honestly i i do think in a weird way the kings are very comfortable as well they're not afraid of this team they might not want to play them but ultimately it's the evil you do know against the evil you don't know and uh they've done the game planning they've done all the research you could possibly do on this team the warriors aren't doing anything different than than they've been doing their entire run so it's just about going out there and executing. And uh, again, in a night where nobody believes in you, you got to spark some confidence in yourself. They're going to need De'Aaron, obviously. I mean, De'Aaron's going to have to have 30, 30 points plus, no question about it. They're going to need Harrison Barnes to show up. They're going to need Keegan Murray to show what he showed in games four through seven of last year in the playoffs. And Demonis Sabonis. Man, I talked all that talk about Mike Brown having the opportunity to right a wrong. How about Demonis Sabonis, the opportunity that he has in front of him right now after everyone clowned him? If Sabonis goes off in the play-in and has a triple-double, um, you know, how, how does that silence the haters? Of course, they'd probably say, oh, it's the play-in and not the playoffs. Do it in the playoffs. But, uh, again, just it, it's the same opponent. You know what to do. You know what the game plan is. You know exactly how they're going to attack you. Except this time I, I'd probably be pretty surprised if Kevon Looney plays as much as he played last year in the playoffs. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's a really good opportunity for redemption and a very, very rare opportunity for redemption. So I'm sure that's how Mike Brown and his staff and all of this team uh, is going to look at this. Because I know they feel bad about last year. I'm going to be watching Game 6 tonight. Um, probably won't put my, I'll probably watch the highlights of Game 7. Don't really need to relive that one. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that there's, there's a lot that they can glean from uh, last year in the playoffs. And... You know, that's really the Kings' biggest hope because I don't, I realistically don't think anybody believes in them. I'll tell you the honest truth right now. I don't have faith. I would not, if I were putting money on this game, I wouldn't put it on the Kings. Uh, if, if you know, I, I think there's a chance they can win, absolutely. All the things I just listed, but uh, ultimately, you know, the, the Warriors are, are playing their best basketball and the Kings have not. And the Kings have to really, we've seen them be up and down, but especially here recently without Malik, it just hasn't felt like they have that pop that they need uh, against Phoenix. You know, I, I completely agree. I think Matt George said it uh, on his podcast, but, you know, I, I think the Kings played about as well as they could against Phoenix. And ultimately that wasn't enough. And I don't know if Phoenix is going to miss as many shots as they missed. Uh, the other day if they were to play them again. So I, I felt like the Kings had about as good of an opportunity to beat an opponent as they could have had uh, against Phoenix, and they couldn't pull through. We saw them in both of those Mavs games. They just had to win one of them in order to keep pace with Dallas. They got swept by Dallas in that two-game series. They could not 
uh, match the level that Dallas was able to reach. And you see Dallas has since gone to different heights. I, I, I'm not saying it's impossible. Uh, it's a one-game playoff, a play-in. Uh, anything can happen, absolutely. It doesn't have to mean that the best team is going to win. That's the fun of a one-game series. But uh, the chips are undoubtedly stacked up against the Kings, even though they are at home. Again, last year, Game 7, they were at home. So I, I don't think anybody's going to be betting on them. Of course, I haven't even brought up the whole angle of uh, let's see what's possibly setting up here for the NBA. Uh, if New Orleans beats the Lakers on Tuesday – uh, that means that the Lakers will then be in that 7-8 final one-game elimination. And who better uh, to have your final playing game than the Lakers against the Warriors in, a, seven, or in, a, in a, a battle for the final playoff spot, which ultimately doesn't matter. Like, you know, the, the NBA is looking for ratings, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, but you'd be a fool if, uh, if you didn't think that the league would much rather have uh, Lakers Warriors than than Kings Lakers. Even though that's a classic series, uh, they they don't want that. And if if the Pelicans make it, then they need Steph Curry to lift the ratings uh, of that game. So uh, let's see here. James X is saying uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. I don't know if that's confirmed yet, uh, but. Uh, definitely, if you can send me who you're getting that from, uh, I would love to confirm that for you guys. I definitely know it's Tuesday, though. Um, yeah. I don't think... Not, no one that I've seen has officially tweeted it out. But, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much all I have. I mean, yeah, I don't really want to spend a lot of time on tonight. And, uh, honestly, I've got to save all of my my takes and thoughts for the radio side tomorrow. Um, yeah. Let's see here. It's like Scotty Scheffler is going to win the Masters. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to ESPN, checking the score. Ooh, okay, let's see here, actually. Let's see Mike Brown, some comments trick in, uh, trickling out from, uh, from Mike Brown's press conference here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Mike Brown said that the team obviously wanted more, but this is the situation the Kings are in. They're ready for the experience. Mike Brown's talked about that a lot recently, about how this uh, that they're going through right now, even if it's not fun, uh, the experience is invaluable. Uh, okay, yes, I am now seeing it officially. Uh, the NBA has tweeted it out. Uh, NBA PR tweets out Tuesday at 7 p.m. officially. Uh, the Kings vs. Warriors, Lakers, uh, Pelicans will be at 4.30. Uh, Kings, Warriors as the headliner at 7 p.m. That is something. That is something for sure. I also just had a friend text me if I knew anything about tickets. I will say here I don't know anything about tickets know if they've even started thinking about that kind of thing yet uh, because there was a possibility that the Kings were going to play on the road so I would imagine anybody who is <clears throat> looking for tickets to the play-in um, I would imagine they would have to go on sale tomorrow morning I would imagine around 8 a.m but that's just a complete guess but uh, I, I you know definitely look out on the Kings socials uh, and maybe just periodically check the website as well uh, for ticket information because, uh, yeah, they, they got to get those puppies out quickly. And I don't think, I mean, maybe they, I know they, they sold out on season tickets. I would assume season ticket holders would get the first uh, bite at the apple there. But, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Mike Brown on Golden State. I think they're a better team than last year. He mentioned Chris Paul and the growth of their young players. Uh, Coach Mike Brown acknowledges that they wanted more out of this season. But whenever you can play, after the last game of the regular season, that's a good thing. He said, quote, let's friggin' go. <laughs> let's friggin' go, Mike. Oh, I also see Steve Kerr. Let's get, uh, this will be interesting. Do I have my headphones? Ooh, I hope I brought my headphones. Let's see here. Oh. 
Oh, yes, sir. I was like, I thought I did. Here we go. Uh, let's hear Steve Kerr's comments here on uh, sharing the 9-10 matchup with the Sacramento Kings. Okay, here is... Hold on. Let's throw this up here. All right, here is head coach Steve Kerr. On Gowden, playing. Scenes, what are Kings. your early thoughts on you know the fact that it will be Kings in an elimination game in like 48 hours? Well, it'll be a great atmosphere. Um, we were there last year, obviously, and um, you know they'll they'll have their their crowd behind them, and um, it's nice to not get on a plane. Um, so we'll uh, we'll take the bus up there tomorrow, and um, you know have a a day to prepare and be ready to go. I'm sure. You- okay. Not much there from uh, from Steve, but yeah, he's he's. Uh, I'm sure he's excited. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is exactly what the Warriors would have wanted uh, because of their familiarity with this Kings team. And uh, you know, yeah, ultimately, it, it feels like this was always always destined with, with just how these guys are always in their way. Um, You know, how is everybody feeling about it? Um, can I do a poll? I can't do a poll, unfortunately, on here, or else I would. Um, yeah, just like, is everybody feeling good? Are you nervous? Are you excited? I think here's the one thing. This atmosphere is going to be unreal. He is not wrong. Steve Kerr is not wrong. He said it's going to be a good atmosphere. Um, this is one of the, the cool things about I, I don't know if cool is even the right word i want to use but uh it, oh and my light just went off <laughs> uh i was going to say uh this is one of the cooler things about damn let me uh hold on, let me open this, this curtain up real quick get some light here i don't know if this helps at all uh yeah it's better uh, so, yeah, this is one of the cool things about the Kings and Warriors being so close is, um, you know, they it's going to be a really split crowd. Like, it's truly going to be, uh, I would think, 70-30, maybe 75-25. Who knows? Maybe I know for the playoffs, uh, Kings fans definitely kept Warriors out of here. Like, especially game one, it was 98% Kings fans, to be honest. But play-in game... I feel like a lot of people are disappointed with how the season has gone. Um, and I think this could, you know, uh, this could be the last time we see the the big three together with Clay's contract being up here soon. Uh, this could be the last time that the Warriors fans get to see those three. So I, it would not surprise me if, uh, if those guys uh, end up showing up. And I don't think that's good for the Kings. It's going to be a, a really cool environment uh, just because not – Oftentimes in sports, do you have teams so close in proximity and, and fan bases truly split like that? But uh, that's one of the few positives uh, about these guys playing each other and, and being so close. I'm going to hop off. Like I said, I got to save a lot of takes for tomorrow. Uh, I'm also going to try and enjoy the rest of today as uh, who knows? Who knows how many times we're going to be able to see this beam. And I definitely want to get a get a look at it during the daytime. So y'all have a fantastic day. Uh, it's been a really fun season on these streams, not necessarily watching this team all the time. But uh, appreciate every single one of you for hopping in here. If you've been here uh, all season, I appreciate you. Uh, I, I hope to be back next season as well. We're definitely going to continue to do these throughout the playoffs as well. So stay tuned uh, right here. Keep it locked right here on Sacktown Sports 1140 YouTube. And I believe we're also on the Twitter page as well. Uh, I will see you all on Tuesday after the Sacramento Kings take on the Golden State Warriors. You can also check out Styles and Watkins tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. You're not going to want to miss it. My guy Allen is going to go through it. Peace.